All right. Okay, so this, is, uh, this presentation is going to build on a lot of things that have been mentioned over the past two days, and hopefully uh, it provides maybe a little bit of a practical solution to start moving forward on some of these ideas. So again, my name is Janine Kraft. Um, I'm the Department Head of History of Art and Design here at CCAD. So multiplicity of views within the context of the classroom serves to enhance not only student engagement, but also the ability to critically analyze material from a variety of perspectives, thus increasing the empathetic path of learning. So a collaborative or co-teaching can be, you know, a very expensive institutional prospect. So in this presentation, I want to talk about some strategies that I employed in my critical issues in the contemporary art world class, um, subtitled The Life of Art Beyond the Studio, because that wasn't a long enough title. Um, so again, over the past several years, I've tried to, again, leverage assets in order to facilitate not only a lower cost collaborative teaching component, but also a robust slate of visiting artists from uh, not only within the local community, but nationally and internationally. So in approaching uh, the original iteration of this course, which was originally taught as an honors course, you know, again, I sought to bring in a variety of voices from the contemporary art world, as well as a studio collaborator, into the course curriculum without that big financial outlay of a fully collaborative or co-taught course. So in order to achieve this, I drew upon a variety of sources and modes of presentation that I'm going to detail a little bit more fully. But once I realized the potential of this model and experiencing the successful enrichment of course content and the student experience, again, I continued to repeat the model, and I really believe that the scope of the model could be leveraged across our institutions to complement a broader range, range of programming. So how to get many voices on the cheap. So I originally sought to draw upon my own personal connections in a bit of a give and take model. So identifying artists and others in the contemporary art world who would either benefit from a public platform of presentation or for whom I could do or had done some promotion of their work uh, and can draw, could draw upon a talk in kind. So first I identified artists about whom I'd written uh, and asked if they would be willing to give a visiting artist talk about their recent work. Now, because of the international nature of my research practice, many of these artists were in Ireland. So in order to facilitate their talks without that incursion of expense, we arranged these talks via Skype. So this also lessened the time commitment on their side, um, making them even more willing to devote 45 minutes to an hour to talking to my class. So these are just a few examples. Um, Sean Taylor, who is the director of, or was the director, he still teaches in MA space at Limerick School of Art and Design. Uh, Deirdre O'Mahony, uh, Andrew Duggan, and then I was really lucky because Connor came into town a few days early this week, so I co-opted him to give a visiting artist talk to my class as well. Thanks, Connor. Okay. So in the first iteration of this course, I also had an MFA student who was auditing, and that brought another unique voice to the curriculum. So she became a collaborative force in the studio component of the course, freely contributing because it complemented and benefited her own growing practice. And then once she graduated, she came back as a collaborator for the next couple of years on an hourly rate for a predetermined number of hours to facilitate the collaborative studio project. So that allowed me to have a part-time kind of co-teacher with that, again, out the, without the outlay of, you know, um, for two full-time instructors. And then this semester, I am very, very lucky. I have two um, current MFA students collaborating with me. Uh, one is my graduate assistant, Andrew Wilson, uh, and then also Sam Metter, whose practice is in, again, socially engaged projects. So she's working with the class as well. And they're fantastic, by the way. So again, MFA students, current and recent graduates, are frequently interested in not only promoting their work, but also honing their presentation skills. And I found that they're quite open to giving a visiting artist talk to classes. So again, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And for me, this worked also internationally. As I said, because of my work, uh, I was in contact with recent MFA and also PhD studio graduates in Ireland, whom as emerging artists, you know, they wanted the exposure and they, were, you know, again, wanted that practice of honing their visiting artist talk. So at the time, I kind of tapped all these students as they graduated. Eileen Hutton, uh, who had finished a studio PhD at the Byrne College of the Art. You're going to see a theme here at the Byrne College of the Art, uh, Byrne College of Art. Um, and then, again, Elena Harvey Collins from CCD, Robert Ellis, uh, after he had finished his MFA in photography. And then Marianne Worrell is the first graduate from the Byrne College of Art in their Master's in Art and Ecology. And she's going to give a talk in a couple of weeks. 
So I also identified some other key fig figures locally who might benefit from the public platform of the class. One of them you've heard from a couple of times, Elaine Brogan Luttrell. So she was the or is the founder and head of Minerva Financial Arts. And at the time, she was just starting to teach um, business in the arts courses at CCAD and was looking to recruit students for her merging program. This was a few years ago. So she would come in the past few years and give a talk about her work about you know, business in the arts. And that complemented my course content, but it also served to educate our students about new curricular programming at CCAD. Now, she's been so fantastic, she doesn't need me anymore <laughs> because her program is quite full, uh, but she's been very generous and continues to come back and talk. So to bring additional voices of wisdom and experience into the conversation, I also drew upon internal and local institutional players who, as colleagues, uh, were more than willing to give a guest talk to the class about their work or course themes. So again, institutional assets here at CCAD, I've had everyone from you know, one of our deans. Um, Michael Goodson has been fantastic giving gallery talks you know, uh, to every class I have about whatever current exhibition we have. Uh, Denny Griffith, our former president, has given visiting artist talks not only about his work, but also about the path he's taken as an arts administrator. And uh, I have to say he came back a couple of weeks ago and it was a really um, fantastic experience. So again, so tying in with some of our other assets here, uh, as well as our partner next door, uh, the Columbus Museum of Art. So the previous and current associate curators of contemporary art, again, have come in to give talks or let us come over there and given us gallery talks, which were fantastic. Now, I know what you're all thinking, but I'm not a complete mooch, okay? So I do pay some of these visiting artists. Um, so again, to bring, uh, again, to kind of complement this burgeoning slate of speakers and collaborators, I also identify key figures in, uh, locally so that I could give them a small honorarium, again, because they didn't have to travel too far just down the street, such as uh, Rebecca Ebel, who's the director of the Pizzuti Collection here in town. So again, how does my own experience translate into a working model that could be mined by the ACAD consortium? So here's the proposal to build a cross-institutional digital platform to house a database of potential guest speakers for ACAD member institutions, as well as to potentially house archive videotape presentations of guest speakers. So again, the possibilities, uh, I, I think probably a wiki, uh, which is open source, it could um, host multi-file types would be a great one. Maybe you guys have other ideas that you could bring to this, this conversation. Again, this would have to be password protected, uh, have multi-user edit capability, and be in a database format. So again, organizing uh, the format categories and also have a record of use. Again, these are just some of the potential uh, categories that we could have everywhere from arts administrators, museum and gallery um, uh, staff, standard visiting artists, designers, industry specialists. Um, you can have different categories, emerging artists and designers, our recent alums. Uh, project collaborators, again, all the way down to international artists who might want to give a Skype or video talk. Again, you'd have to have some cross-listing here. What are their rates of compensation or, or honorarium ranges? How uh, We'd have to keep a record of use of these um, visiting artists so that we don't overtax them. Uh, somebody brought up recommendations like a Yelp system. Again, we might not want to go there, but I don't know. Uh, as well as discipline designations. Again, I think it could house additional resources or have additional functionalities with um, media files, visiting artist resource links, and um, somebody mentioned yesterday, I believe it was Elaine, that having a simulcast schedule of visiting artist talks as well would be fantastic, and that was mentioned as well today about sharing these schedules. Again, the users, uh, each ACAD institution would have to have an institutional database administrator, uh, but faculty would all need read, write, edit, and edit permissions so that we could always be keeping it constantly up to date. And again, coming out of all the conversations of the past two days, I think this is just uh, one potential kind of um, area for sharing. Again, we could do this for plus B, for curricular resources, project-based learning, community projects, sharing of best practices, and as a study abroad kind of collaboration incubator. So again, why go to all this trouble? 
Uh, I'd like to uh, read the words of other people here, but again, collaborative teaching allows students and faculty to benefit from a healthy exchange of ideas. And I think Chris talked about this, Chris Yates in his uh, presentation on Collaboration Studio, this idea of uh, creating a space defined by mutual respect and shared interest. Um, and this is dear, near and dear to my heart that, again, college and university professors must view themselves not as purveyors of information, uh, but agents of cultural change as cultural curators. So, again, in our shifting role from knowledge imparters to content curators, bringing multiple voices to the discussion stimulates the cultivation of critical thinking and communication skills in our students. So through this range of techniques, such as drawing on personal networks and emerging artists, small strategic stipends, smaller cross-discipline collaborative projects, Skype visiting artists in workshops, as well as a, an online presence, students can be exposed to a broad range of voices from a, um, different types of constituencies, ranging from practicing artists uh, to exhibition and gallery directors, arts administrators, to entrepreneurial experts. So broadening the scope of perspectives brought to the course material has resulted in a high level of student engagement and success in the learning outcomes. So what we're aiming here for is high impact learning. This is one of Kevin's favorite phrases. So again, this is about, again, sharpening one's own understanding by listening seriously to the insights of other, especially from a diverse range of backgrounds. So I do believe that this model can be employed uh, across a range of art and design curricula, and our opportunities could be digitally art archived in this password-protected database to leverage um, them across the ACAD institutions, thus opening up a possible slate of experiences to enhance the innovative curriculum, uh, innovative curriculum with a diverse range of practitioner voices. And on a lighter note, uh, in the words of Stephen Colbert, if we have enough critical mass, we can make it a reality. So thank you.